Uh, ni hao, <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> I'm completely delirious today. Um, I'm trying to do a couple of videos for week 13 because we've just started week 13. It is Sunday, and I want to stay on track as much as possible. Um, I mentioned in a previous video that I have been down for a few days uh, with my second summer cold, which sucks more than I can say. More than I can say. But I'm not going to give up because, you know what? Even when you're sick, you have to communicate. This is my ginger tea. I hesitate to put too much lemon or honey in it because I have a problem with sugar. And a little honey only becomes more honey. <laughs> but the ginger is amazing and super good for the throat. If you ever have a sore throat and you don't already do this, grate up some ginger, put it in hot water, and um, it will absolutely overwhelm your senses, but it really, really feels good. And it's supposed to, like, disinfect. You're cold, and that's really not the right word, but we're going to ignore that for a second. It's really good for your cold. It's supposed to, like, get rid of, <clears throat> when I don't have words, I do sound effects. So it's supposed to help get rid of uh, whatever is causing your cold. Bad stuff. You only get part of the red door today, because that's how crappy I feel. <laughs> I can't move to the other side of the table to give you the full effect. Bah. I'll be fine. It's a cold. It's a cold. All right, I wanted to just do a quick update video. And I want to ask for your advice, and unfortunately I'm going to be drinking a lot during this. It looks like a cocktail, doesn't it? Gosh, no, it's really not. Ah, think of eating raw garlic. This is the ginger equivalent. All right, so <clears throat> here's the question I need to ask you. It's not a burning question about the language. It's about language learning. Um, there are too many resources. I mentioned this before with my language fatigue video, and my list keeps getting longer and longer and longer, and I have decided that I am, and I wrote down the phrase, a shiny object chaser. Yes, I am. Now that, uh, I just looked in urbandictionary.com, which is a good place to go for English uh, slang, English language slang, and I, it is, it is in that realm. It, it's apparently a thing, a phrase that people use. Now, of course it's a thing because I said it, but I heard it on the TV show, yes, I watched this, Dating Naked Season 2, I heard Carrie say it, and I laughed hysterically because I have known so many people in my life. She used it referring to a man who would literally just follow one beautiful girl after another without thinking about anything else other than appearance. Totally fine. Um, if that's how you are, that's how you are. If you're a parent about it, it's better than if, you're, if, you're, if you hide it. Um, but I am like this with language learning resources. I have found some amazing resources that work really well for me in the past... Uh, 13 weeks, well, 12 weeks so far, and what happens is that sometimes if they're an app, they'll stay on my phone and I'll use them regularly. If it's a website, if it's a YouTube channel, if it's an Instagram feed, I, they do tend to get lost in the shuffle because once I follow them, I'll find some more and I'll follow some others and I'll forget about the one that I initially started that chain, which was really, really helping me. So... I need to put this out into the world. I am a shiny objects chaser when it comes to language learning materials. In order to deal with this defect in my brain, <laughs> or is it a defect? Who cares? In order to deal with this, because I'm missing some of the stuff that I know already works for me, so I'm trying to get past that. So I've started to make lists, and I did start to make lists as I'm doing them in the videos, in my update videos, I started to make lists within my own notebook of the different things that I'm doing, but my notebook I don't open every day. Um, I don't need to because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is in apps and YouTube and Instagram and, and Tumblr. So I needed to put it somewhere online, somewhere that I have to look. So inevitably it's turned into an email to myself. You do what you can, right? I mean, I could put it in Keep, but I only look at that when I need something from that I know is stored in Keep. So I'm not going to look there unless I have to. So I need to put it somewhere where I'm going to look whether I want to or not. And language guilt or language inspiration or if I'm bored looking to see if I have any emails, I'll see that list and go, oh yeah, I do have more I want to do today with my language learning. I do apologize if I'm touching my nose. I, I have a runny nose. I'm trying not to make it super apparent, but it's there. Ugh, let's just drink again. All right, so here is my current list. And the question to you as I'm reading this list is, what should I minimize? Or what should I focus on? My focus is on reading and writing, but pronunciation and opinion has crept in because it's one of the things that the characters are need to be need to be built on. I didn't think that initially. I have been converted. I don't need to get perfect with the tones, but I do need to start 
attaching the sounds to the characters as I'm learning them instead of just learning them in isolation, which worked well for a while, but I hit a wall, and to get past the wall, I'm learning the pinyin now. So, as you're listening to this list of five pronunciation things and six, 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 seven vo a combined vocabulary and grammar uh, things, if there's anything that seems to be excessive or not needed just yet, or that you think I can put off till later, or that won't help me at all, then do let me know uh, what your suggestions might be. <clears throat> I do need to warn you, this is a cultivated list of 12 weeks of onlineness, so <laughs> I might be resistant, but I'm not that resistant. Um, so here we go. In pronunciation, and I'm trying to look at you while I'm doing this, but I'm looking at a list on my computer, which is down here. All right, so pronunciation. Uh, I mentioned in a previous video uh, the sound, the pronunciation stuff I'm working on. The pinyin songs, the alphabet songs, or the pinyin alphabet songs, whatever they're called. I'm doing two of those at least a day, hopefully in the morning, hopefully morning and evening, because music really relaxes me, and then I can practice the sounds either passively or actively, depending on how burnt out I am right then. So that's number one. Number two, Mandarin language song. I mentioned in the previous video the Renee song that I'm working on slowly but surely. <clears throat> number three, the microburst phrases that uh, Chinese with Eva, the, the feed in Instagram, Chinese, Chinese with Eva, that I'm doing on, she does like one phrase a day, and it's awesome, and I like to keep practicing that. I want to consciously remind myself to look for her feed every day. Um, it sounds weird to say look for her feed. What is that? It sounds like I should be saying look for her feet. And why would you look for somebody's feet? That's an aside. Number four, speak and get feedback. I want to start putting phrases that I'm learning in these other places into the high native how do I sound function and have other people feedback on my pronunciation. Again, it's um, if you haven't been to high native, the application yet, I do strongly suggest checking it out. It's awesome. Um, you can either, <coughs> I'm doing both giving feedback in English and asking for feedback, <clears throat> excuse me, I need a cough up, and asking for feedback in Chinese. And I haven't done the pronunciation stuff yet because I've been working on syllables. But since I'm learning some of the phrases now via Eva and in some of the other places I'm going to talk about, I want to start getting uh, <coughs> into that round too, excuse me. Okay, so that's four or five. The Pinion Trainer app, which is mostly initial sounds, final sounds, and sometimes um, them together in a way that's super duper hard. And because it's super duper hard, I find that it's easier to listen to sounds, even if I don't know what the meaning is, I'm beginning to distinguish the sounds from each other, which is awesome! So that's pronunciation. I don't know what I can trim from that. I don't know what I want to trim from that. <coughs> but I'm, I'm open to what you think or added, if you think there's anything that I could add that would be pretty easy to add or um, or really helpful to add. Or if you have any um, alphabet pinion songs that you um, can add to the mix that are also like two, three minutes long, because the two that I'm using are super short. I think they're like two minutes and four minutes or something. So those are super easy, super easy. So I just play them over and over again. And um, <clears throat> I'm sure annoy everybody on either wall next to me because they are obnoxious children's songs. But they are helpful to me because I'm new to the language. Okay, the seven things, seven things. This is seven here. I learned seven in Taiwan. That's a previous video. Okay, it's kind of a co <coughs> combination of vocabulary and grammar. For me, more vocabulary, but it's grammar input, whether it's intentional or not. One is more vocabulary. The Anki radical cards that I'm doing, all 200 some of them, um, not just the most frequent ones, I'm creating... <coughs> Excuse me, I'm creating them from the Kongshi spreadsheet. Um, I have a Kongshi radical spreadsheet that I'm using, and every time I create a flashcard, I mark it off as done. I'm also including examples of words that that radical is used in, so it takes a little bit longer, and I'm including the pronunciation practice in there too, but primarily it's meaning with the pronunciation, but primarily vocabulary. Also, reviewing those cards once a day, at least. At least. Ideally twice a day, but there's life. I'm about to go into my busiest work month in August, so all of these will be um, be done once instead of two or three times. Like now, I the next few days, I have a lot of time uh, when I'm not sleeping um, and, and drinking ginger tea. But um, after that, I'm, I'm going to be really busy, so I'll probably just do each one of these once a day um, when I have time. But I'm still going to do them because they add significantly to my experience here. Oh, my phone keeps overheating. Okay, we're going to keep going. So that was two. Three is paper flashcards. I resurrected <clears throat> these really adorable little plain flashcards 
that I bought in a Japanese uh, dollar store a few months ago. Um, I've been trying to go mostly digital with just my note card, not note cards, but like notes in my notebook, but I do find that I want note cards to move them around, maybe paste them on the wall in certain ways, either with a similar opinion or with a similar character or similar something, that I, the ones I confuse together. I want to be able to move them around um, in different ways, and you can't really do that with something stuck in a notebook. So I want to start putting those 200 some Kangxi radicals into the paper flashcards and later other vocabulary that I'm doing. I feel like I the digital stuff is incredibly helpful, especially with the pronunciation. Uh, the sound files that I can attach, but I am missing the physicality of being able to move the cards around. So I think doing both would be better for me. I keep going back and forth on this, and I think I'm just going to give in and do both. Both, both, both. Well, all three, because I'm still going to have the paper notebook, notebook of phrases and things and similar ones next to each other in a thing. So there's multiple ways. Um, <clears throat> multiple ways this is happening. So that's included. That's number three. Number four is Twitter. I follow a lot of folks that are doing different things, either teaching or learning Chinese. And so following them, I'm learning some words and phrases, and I'm looking at their phrases. And so I'm, I'm kind of getting a frequency view of what people are talking about, and that's helping me figure out some of the more common words and phrases, and I'll pull those over into Anki, or I'll save them and keep and use them in my daily life, which has happened. <coughs> Number five, memorize the app. It's very grammar-based, but I'm in such the beginning levels that um, it's mostly vocabulary for me. Um, I think the Woshi Stephanie was also in there, but I learned that more from an Instagram video or some YouTube videos I'm learning, I'm watching from as well. Um, but yeah, so it's it's still more, more vocabulary for me at this point. I'm not expecting to absorb much of the grammar just yet. I That will come with time and maybe, I, and, and I'll consciously work on that later, but right now it's vocabulary, 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 pinion, 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 and putting those two together, vroom, as I used to do in my language classes. If you are an old student of mine, you remember that, right? Okay, especially in KL. For some reason, in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, when I was teaching there, I did that a lot for like, what were the things that went together? Da, 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 da. I don't even remember the grammar points where they went together, but if you are a past student of mine, for some reason, if you have found this channel, leave a comment below. What was I doing that things went together? Because I remember the sound, boom, but, you know, maybe it was can, not, can't. I don't remember. I don't remember. But anyway, the sound is important to me. Very, very sound oriented. Uh, number six, Chinese skill app. Again, very uh, grammar oriented, but I'm pulling mostly vocabulary from it, and, um, and that's that. On YouTube, there's two YouTube channels which have videos that I find really, really helpful. And this is my reminder to go to those, not just follow whatever's in my screen. Because the algorithms are taunting me. They're, they put all kinds of new Chinese videos in there. And being a shiny object chaser, I'll click and click and click. And it's so dangerous. I don't mind clicking on new, but I want to do the things that I know work and that, um, and that I like first. And then I'll move on to new if I have time. So this is this list is here to keep me motivated. Okay, one second. Ugh, I hate being sick. Okay, God, look at me. I'm like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and a new category that I've included is language learning inspiration. Um, I am beginning to find out that mm, I need new methods for learning Chinese because the methods that I use for teaching my students English don't necessarily always work for learning Chinese. So I'm watching a lot of videos of polyglots who are learning multiple languages um, or just one but they're learning a new one like their second one or third one or fourth one. So I'm watching Shannon at Eurolinguiste and I'm probably saying her YouTube channel name wrong but she is amazing. Here's why. Awesome! Oh my god, she has so many amazing tips. I watched a video of hers where she was talking about bridging, like jumping, like putting your list of like this language, this language, and this language, and filling in the gaps of what you don't know, so you're kind of, your language interference isn't interfering as much because you're looking at them near each other and you'll be able to distinguish one from the other. And I told you that I had some Spanish inter language interference with me recently, and I think, you know what, instead of going, why is that happening? Maybe I should be making lists of the different words in the three languages, the English, Spanish, and Chinese. My Chinese is going to run out really fast because it's not a high level. I've never really got to a high level, but if it comes up in my brain, maybe I should do that bridging 
so that I don't just go, eh, eh, go away, but I just, why not review that while I'm doing this? You know, not consciously right now, because I really want to focus on Chinese, but, but so there are little tips like that in her videos, which are really helpful to me. I'm really inspiring, and to see people who are learning many languages and to see them work at it all the time really dis dis demystifies for me that you have to be... Something weird just fell. <laughs> Don't know what just happened. Anyway, I'll investigate that later. Um, it really demystifies the whole thing of you have to be a natural at learning languages to me. So this channel for me is one way of keeping me on track and it's another way of showing the process and then it's not easy to learn a new language. And if you are someone like me who always thought people are either skilled with it or not, see it's funny, for learning languages I always thought you're skilled or you're not, but for teaching it I always thought anybody could learn it. Hippocrat, hippocrat, hippo. Oh dear God. I can't think. My brain is fried on cough drops. The second thing that I'm doing in language learning inspiration is there's always the, there's all these Chinese character like historical or declassification, is that what they're called? Decomposition videos where they take a character and they break it down into either its old written form, orthographic goodness, and um, or they like explain the different parts of it and that kind of thing. And I really like that. Uh, will I always remember those different parts of the characters? Probably not. There's only so much room in here. But I really like seeing that and sometimes it helps demystify the character for me and it helps, it inspires me to kind of relax around the characters and not get overwhelmed that they're so incredibly different than the scripts that I've been um, dealing with, which is mostly the Roman script. I mean, Spanish minus one or two special characters is the same script we use in English. So I've been very, very spoiled in that regard until now. So um, there's that. So again, mostly <coughs> <coughs> pronunciation, vocabulary, and accidental grammar, and language learning inspiration. If you can think of, because I still think this is a fairly long list, um, and especially in August <coughs> when I'm really busy for work, um, can I do all of this every day? No. So I will have to pick and choose, you know, how many times a week do I want to do these. Making flashcards clearly won't be every day. Um, I'm thinking once a week will be enough to keep me going and then I can just review what I have until the next week. Um, reviewing the flashcards is daily. That's super easy with the time space repetition. Reviewing the digital flashcards is really just 10-15 minutes maximum. And that's if I push it and do some extra cards. The Twitter stuff is just fun. I also have my news feed in there, so I get some stuff in there, That so that's easy. Memorizing Chinese skill app, you kind of pick how far you want to go each day. So, I don't know. I guess it's more of a, a matter of how often I would do each of these things, because I can't do all of this every day, clearly. Um, I have a full-time job, and I would like to have a social life, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and other things that are relaxing and enjoyable other than language learning and my podcast, which has fallen by the wayside because of this cold. Oh. So I appreciate your advice and your tips, and not just deletions, but any additions to things similar to this that I can add on to this um, and maybe rotate with these other things. If you have other alphabet pinion songs that I can rotate one, in, one one day, one the other day, that kind of thing. If you have any other... Um, <clears throat> Print small a microburst pronunciation practice lessons on like Instagram or Tumblr. Send them my way. I can rotate Eva with one of those. Or hers are so short; they're like 10, 15 seconds. I could probably do it in addition to them. So anyway, so should I delete something? Should I add something? Is this too much for any one human? <laughs> These are my questions. If you are learning Chinese, what is your process? What is your list of things you want to do? What is your focus and how are you keeping track of your focus? Um, I'm not a spreadsheet person when it comes to this stuff. I have a spreadsheet for my vocabulary now because I find it's easier to see what I have done and haven't done for the 200 some kanji ra radicals. But in general, as far as like daily tracking, I'm not a spreadsheet person. Um, I don't even want to complete a calendar like you see here. I don't even want to do that for my language learning. Again, so much of this is on my phone that it's just on my home screen, the first one. So if I want to check my email or my Twitter, it's right there, and I just go, oh, let me take five minutes and do that. And because I want to learn the language, that's an easy thing for me to do. So a lot of these come naturally to me. Um, 
or come without effort. It's not a pain right now to study at all. It's actually really enjoyable. But I also want to be realistic, especially in August when I get swamped with work, um, what I can do. I will be doing a lot of travel for that work, so that is a good thing uh, because I, when I'm traveling, I can be working on my paper flashcards and I can be working on my phone as long as my battery works and things like that. So that part's good. Um, and I've got plenty of data on my phone and blah, 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 blah. So that part is fine. I might actually be more motivated then because I'll be sitting on a train with nothing else to do. Um, so there's that. So your, your feedback would be awesome, as always. And thank you in advance for all of your, um, in, your feedback. Thank you for your feedback on previous videos. I really, really appreciate the support and not laughing at my attempt at tones. I do want to bring in some more phrases and things as time goes on um, and show you that I am, I swear, I am learning the language not just in being able to read it but in some of the pronunciation stuff. I resist pronunciation but I'm trying to get over that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so thank you very much and Sajian, goodbye!